Game Ranks presents 10 misconceptions that non-gamers make about gamers. If you play games, which obviously we hope you do, what are you doing here, you'll probably feel our pain with this list. So let's get started with number 10. The first misconception that really bothers us is the belief that games are not beneficial. Meanwhile, online gamers have been solving science's biggest problems by solving puzzles involving genes, having bigger conversations about the universe, and more. There are huge fans of English, science, history, and more that are into games that are more than just about shooting guns. Check out 2011's Fold It, an online puzzle game about protein folding. We brought this up on our channel before, but it's definitely worth looking into if you're a fan of science and stuff. At number 9, what really bothers us is whenever people say that video games make people violent, when playing games really helps people alleviate stress and release tension. There are a lot of studies out there supporting both sides, but if you just think about about it and you know other people that play video games out there, is that we're generally a peaceful folk. Yes, we might commit murders in Grand Theft Auto and slaughter countless aliens, but at the end of the day, I know a lot of video gamers that maybe hit an animal with a car and then freak out and grieve about it for three days. The idea that we're all bloodthirsty, violent school shooters is just so old hat. At number 8, we have the concept that just because you game means that you're automatically a nerd and know four different computer languages and can fix somebody's computer for free. We all encounter that somewhere. Just because you play Minecraft on the computer all day, your aunt thinks that you can fix her phone for free. You might not even know how to fix the phone. While many of us admittedly are, a lot of us aren't automatically crazy super nerds. We're not just gonna fix your shit or teach your daughter how to play video games just because we're lonely and we would love the company or something. Because honestly, we don't. <laughs> And number seven, a common misconception is that all gamers are guys. While I don't necessarily believe those polls that say 50% of gamers are women, I do know many a woman out there that plays video games and they don't suck at them. He okay. may have killed you a time or two, I don't know, he's good. I'm really good. <laughs> They're not a poser fake gamer girl or anything like that. That whole idea that if you're a girl that plays video games, you don't really know what you're doing and you tend to lose is just kind of old-fashioned. And I'm not going to get on a social justice warrior podium or anything like that, but you just can't deny that when you look outside, everybody's playing video games these days. And to deny that fact is just kind of a little silly. At number six, we really have a problem with that idea that video games make you stupid. Studies have shown that playing video games can actually make your brain bigger. Seriously. There's a study out there that shows that playing Super Mario 64 for 30 minutes a day over two months increased an adult's brain volume in their right hippocampus, the right prefrontal cortex, and the cerebellum. These are the parts of the brain that are responsible for memory formation, strategic planning, muscle control, and spatial navigation. Stuff like that that you do in video games every day, and it makes you better for it. Seriously though, have you ever felt like when you're driving you dodge something very quickly? I'm not saying we're all Spider-Man or anything, but I do think we all have have better developments thanks to studies out there that prove this. At number 5, we have beef with the idea that sitting indoors all day means you have no friends. Players of MMOs have to deal with this stereotyping all the time. The reality is that people can make a lot of friends online and are sometimes even more social than people are in real life. Playing video games is a very social thing. You're constantly being fielded with friend requests and game invites on PSN, Xbox Live, and Steam, and whatever. And in two hours of playing video games, you might have more social interactions with people than some people do in a full week. This is the 21st century, where you can make friends that you don't live next door to, that you don't see very often, but you get to communicate with every day. I know I personally have made many friends online that I'm very thankful for and I hang out with and talk to all the time in the digital realm. Maybe some people think I'm a loser. I don't really give a shit. And number four, a big misconception that non-gamers have is that gaming is a waste of time. That's really just a hypocritical statement because most of these people that say video games are a waste of time will also go and watch the average of two to three hours of TV every night. You know, everybody has to have a hobby, and hobbies shouldn't be considered a waste of time. It's something that you do to enjoy that makes you happy. And watching TV is passively consuming, while playing video games is actively consuming and really engaging all parts of your brain, reflexes, and motor functions. And that's honestly kind of more badass. You're having way more of a better time either playing with friends or engaging in a story or using your brain to solve puzzles. So you know what? Fuck you. It's not a waste of time. At all. Gaming is just another form of entertainment, just as much as watching a movie or TV or surfing the internet is, even though it can be argued that it's more engaging. At number three, many of you probably have heard that you can't make a career out of video games. And that is absolutely not true. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Now, of course, you may not be PewDiePie or Total Biscuit or writing articles for IGN or even developing the next Gears of War and becoming Cliffy B. But that doesn't mean you can't make it and create something or run something without the will to learn and a lot of hard work and elbow grease. I don't want to sound too inspirational, but you can do anything you set your mind to and don't let people tell you otherwise. Yes, of course, making it into video games is really, really hard. But if you got a good idea, some passion, the willing to work really hard and the will to ever increasingly and never stop learning and developing new things will make you go really far. Go out there and make a game, write an article, record a video, do a podcast, do whatever, and show all those assholes that you can make something out of playing video games. At number two, we have that misconception that video games aren't art. And some gamers are really 50-50 on this, but the reality is if you consider movies or reading or literature art, you can consider games art. Yes, I like to think that games other than Journey and The Last of Us with sweeping stories and epic visuals are also pieces of art. Yes, even stuff like Call of Duty and things that are just more fun and addictive and playable are forms of art because somebody made them. 
And now before you say that video games are corporate products, all forms of art were products sold for money at one time or another. Even Leonardo da Vinci did paid commissions. Okay, yes, maybe games like Candy Crush aren't art, but you really shouldn't let people who don't know any better shit on something that you really enjoy. Your favorite medium, video games, should stand on their own. And number one, the biggest misconception that non-gamers make about gamers is that video games are for kids. Ugh, this one is so frustrating, and I get it all the time. Of course, the first basic video games on Apple II and Atari and stuff like that were intended for children, but the medium has grown just as the players who played them. The mainstream AAA market now is all geared toward mature games. Gamers, and most games are rated M for mature. There's a reason for that, because the main audience is adults buying these things. But of course, there will always be a place for children in video games with Skylanders and even Minecraft and stuff like that. But it's a growing medium with growing pains, and a lot of the gamers who started playing as children have now grown up, and the medium has followed. That being said, of course, if you play video games, I like to think that you do have a little bit of an inner child, childlike nature of excitement for the medium in you. And that's something you should never, ever lose. Listen. Never forget to have fun. So guys, those were 10 misconceptions often made about gamers. We know a lot of you guys face this in your daily life, be it from your friends, coworkers, parents, whatever. So we want to know what you think about our items on the list, and we want to know what you guys deal with. So let us know in the comments. And of course, if you had a good time, maybe click the like button, because it really helps us out. And if you want to talk about video games, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Jake Baldino. Of course, you know the drill. If you're new, you should subscribe. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.